In part three of today's show, we're going to look at how to use this Reflect Media setup to get a clean green screen key in Final Cut Pro 10. Welcome back, everybody. This is part three of a long sequence where we started talking about the Reflect Media Chromat, Chromat, Chroma Key, Chroma, I'm going to get the name right one of these days, Chroma Key solution. There we go, where we're taking this incredible LED light, shining it at this magical background and building a green or blue screen out of nowhere. It's kind of crazy cool. If you haven't seen that part of it yet, I encourage you to click up here, check that out. Be sure you do watch the first part of the show um, just to see how this tech is that we're, how this works that what we're talking about here. Also, I want to say one more time, thank you very, very much to the DVE store for shipping all this gear out to us today so that we can use. If you are interested in what you're seeing here today, do visit DVE store at dvestore.com slash reflect media. That will give you access to both buy or rent the rig that we're talking about here today. So um, thank you, DVE store. Special thanks to you guys for bringing this, putting this uh, together for us today. This is awesome. And of course, for Reflect Media for making the connection. Okay, so we are going to do a basic key. Uh, we're going to record with the green screen and bring that into Final Cut and do a key on it. But before I bring it into Final Cut, I'm going to do a couple different things with the recording just to show, uh, show some of the advantages and disadvantages of this type of a setup and how you can work around um, some of the inherent disadvantages of it, or one of the, or the main inherent disadvantage, uh, which is something we call a halo shadow. It's kind of a weird reverse thing, but if you saw part one, you know kind of what I'm talking about. We're going to see it again out here. So let's, uh, let's start by taking a look through the GH5. So now is where I get to do my, try and actually manage to hold on to everything at once here. Um, okay, Ryan, you're up for a moment here. So hopefully we're seeing me on here. Yep, there we go. All right, so uh, GH5, I've got the ring on here. I'm actually going to move this camera back a little bit for this, just to get a little bit more distance. And one of the reasons for that is more distance means less likely to get spill off of the LEDs and also less likely to get a halo effect, So which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so let me zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to now switch over to the GH5. So you're now seeing the GH5, seeing through the GH5 here. And obviously, it's just pointing at a, uh, at a gray car right now, so I know that I'm focused. I know that I'm exposed properly. We're good to go there. Also, want to show you that on the GH5, I do have this set up so that we are recording at the highest quality possible. So this is going to be 4K, 30P, 422, 10-bit, all intra. And the reason that I've taken it up that far is because I wanted to make sure that we have as much data as possible uh, to do the key. You want to have that 10-bit file is going to make a difference when you're doing green screening. So if you have the opportunity to shoot in 10-bit and you're doing green, you're going to be better off that way. The 400 megabit means you're going to have less likely, less compression artifacting showing up along edges. And again, just lead to a cleaner key. Um, often when people are doing this kind of stuff really high end, you'll have ProRes 4444, like absolute super, super top quality, zero compression happening. Uh, which is great, but that's not an option we have here. So we're going to take the best that we can get, which is pretty freaking good at 10-bit 422 uh, recorded internally at 400 megabits. So that's what we've got. So this is set up. I am going to actually hit record now on the GH5. So the GH5 is recording. Let's switch back to that view. And I'm going to step into frame here. Let's move the ladder out of the way. We don't need that anymore. And I am right up against the back here. So I'm just going to, you know, this is me here up against the back. You should see minimal to no shadowing, that weird halo shadowing. And this is a, this is a good key, right? I mean, you're going to be able to get a good key off of this. So I'm, uh, this is like cheating because I don't have any hair. Here, I'm going to borrow Betty's wig here. So here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. Ryan, you can stop laughing now. So there we go. We got the wig. So you got somebody out here doing the big old hair dance. And... Uh, and, and Ryan, is, Ryan is losing it. Um, and there we go. So there's, there's our first one. Let me turn off the recording here now. Okay, so that's, come back to me. <laughs> Ryan's so busy laughing, you forgot to turn the camera on. Um, so that's, that's that first step. So we did that. Now what I want to do, I was up against the background. So that was easy. It's a good, clean, no, minimal to no shadowing, halo shadowing happening. Um, but let's, let's make this a little bit harder. And I'm going to put a subject kind of, farther away, it's like five, six feet or something away from the background. So let me actually move Betty back into here. And, and yes, this is Betty, by the way, in case you were ever wondering. I'm still convinced that somebody's going to walk into the studio one day while I'm moving Betty. I'm going to find myself in a very awkward ex position explaining why I'm manhandling my mannequin. Okay, that's good. All right. Now, let's take a look at what the camera sees. Oh, I'm going to have to focus the camera, aren't I? Let's go back over here. Let me reposition this. 
a little bit better. We'll go a little bit wider on that shot and make sure we're focused on Betty. Okay, so we're focused on Betty and you can see the shadows. Can you see what I'm talking about? If you look around her arm on here, you're seeing, you, know, you see it on my hand as well, this shadow on there. This is what we need to get rid of. So one of the ways that we can do this is backlighting. Now there's a limit to how much you can backlight your subject before it's going to start to look like backlighting, which is great if that's what you're looking for, but if that's not the look that you want, then obviously you can't do too much. So this is, this is somewhat limiting, this workaround. Ideally, when you're using this setup, you really wanna have your subject as close to the backdrop as possible. They, they say like a foot, a foot away, two, foot to two feet away. Um, closer is definitely better. But if you can't, then this is one of the ways around it. So let's go back to, we go to the GH5's view, and I am going to take this light right here, and there's my light, make sure that's on, there we go, and just start shining that on her back here. I'm gonna take the intensity way down. We don't need it up very high. But look at this side on here. I'm only gonna do a backdrop, I'm only gonna do this on one side, I'm not gonna do it on both. But look at the arms around here, and look at how the, um, the shadow goes away or comes back. So let me just, I'll turn the light off, turn the light back on, and we're obviously now getting a rim light on there. So that's something you have to be aware of, of course, if you're doing this. But you can also see that the shadowing is going away a little bit. Now, depending on your shot, you know, I might be able to move the light completely actually behind her. So like, let's see, could this, I probably couldn't quite get away with it with this shot. Um, maybe with a smaller backlight, you could get away with that. Try and position it in a way that uh, minimizes. So you can't see the backlight. Now, obviously, if she's moving, that's not gonna help. But this, as I bring this intensity up a little bit, now obviously we're getting glow through the hair here as well, but we are getting less of the haloing. So what I'm gonna do here is just position it off to the side like I had it, and turn that down. Let's get the light out of the shot. Turn it down, we don't want it to be too high here. Just enough to give a little bit of a halo and a little bit of eliminating that shadow. And we don't need to get rid of it completely, right? The goal isn't to completely remove it, um, it's just to minimize it, because the more that it's there, the harder it's gonna be to key out, especially, let me turn this off for a second, especially if you look at hands. So look at, the sh okay, if you look, just look at my arm, the shadow over the arm, that's one thing, and that's you know, easy-ish to get rid of. But the hand, they tend to compound. So in, the, in between the fingers here, you tend to compound it, and that's where it's gonna get the toughest. So that's where you really, you really probably wanna have some additional lighting going on. So um, let's turn this back on. I'm gonna go ahead and record on the GH5. And here we go. So now here, I'm, I'm not gonna do much in here, just a little bit of moving around. We got Betty here with her hair, um, and we're gonna see what this looks like in Final Cut Pro. All right, let's take this off, and switch back over to Ryan, you're on. And I'm gonna pull the card out of this camera. I wasn't even looking when I hit record. Hopefully I actually hit record, that would be nice. And let's bring these into Final Cut Pro and see where we're at. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Here we are in Final Cut Pro. Oh good, I did record both of those, so let's just grab those two shots and import those guys. I've got this same background you saw earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down. Oh, actually, let's not do that first. Let's add these on first. Add these two shots to the timeline and add this graphic underneath it. So we have something to key through, something to see. So Final Cut, doing a key in Final Cut is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just go to the Effects tab, the little Effects tab right here, you click on that guy, the Effects browser. Uh, you can search, just look at all, search it all, and then type in a search, type in key, and you're gonna see two, a keyer and a luma keyer. The keyer is what we want, that's the chroma keyer. Now the way that this is designed, is designed to be largely automatic. Let me turn this light off here. It's designed to be automatic so that when you drop the keyer on, it automatically samples and just tries to do the best thing. It, it gets close. Um, I've never seen it do it perfectly right the first time, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's part of the thing. We got to play with it. So let's go back to it. All I do is take my keyer, drop it on, and boom, it's, it's done its job. Actually, that worked, <laughs> worked out better than the other ones that I played with. Um, from here, now that I've got that up, let's, let's kind of find a more complex. There, we're getting some of the hands showing up. There we go. That's pretty good. Um, oh, no, let's, get, let's get a better... There we go. We're gonna leave it right there. Okay. Uh, over here in the keyer, I can look at the different results. So there's the math. This is actually, this is too good. I really did not expect it to be quite this good. Let me take the volume down on this. I was expecting to have um, some more spill so that I could show you how to, 
how to fix that. Well, all right, let's just pretend that this didn't work out so well. I'm actually really impressed right there. It worked out great. Uh, let's pretend that it did not work out as well. See how there's slightly different shades of green in here? And there's this shadow on here is because of the light that's hitting me. It is casting a shadow on this green backdrop. And so that is a little bit darker. Let's just say that this key did not look quite this good to begin with, that we were seeing some of this shadow, which is honestly what I expected to happen. You just go up here to the sample color and you go, okay, I want this lighter green and I want some of this darker green on here. Grab it again. Some of this darker green on there. And it's sampling it from this one frame. You don't have to go through and do this for every frame. You don't have to redo this um, as the person moves around. You just take one frame as a sample and it uses that information you give it to build the key that works everywhere else. So you just find that little shadow area and off you go. So that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now from here, there's other things that you can do. We'll take a look at that when we get into the hair. So let's put the wig on. Here we go. Um, get the wig in place on there. And look at the, there's the mat, and look at the final result. And you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Let's go to 100%, and let's zoom up in there. And we're not getting, I mean, that actually looks really good, right? Actually, you know what, that looks really darn good. We're not getting any green haloing, which is definitely one of the things that you can get with the green screen. If you get too close to it on a normal green screen, you get reflection from the green showing up over the shoulder, in the hair, and then you have to do things to alter those colors to make sure that the green isn't showing up um, so you don't get that telltale green screen look. You don't, that's something you don't have to worry about with a reflect media setup, which is really pretty cool. So let me, let me do this. I'm gonna get a, actually, if I hit play on here, it's gonna stutter quite a bit because it's, um, it can't quite handle it. So I'm just gonna render a little piece of that. Let's just go to here, um, get rid of that part of the timeline here. We'll just use the part with the hair on there. Me looking fabulous, there we go. And we'll do that. Let's slice that off of there. And now let's do the same thing on this shot here. So I'm going to, Let's see here, yeah, let's, let's do this again. Let me get rid of that piece there. And I'm going to add another key onto this shot. So let's just drag the key on there again. Let's see, maybe this one I'll, I'll have to do it again, add the extra, yeah, this is good. This is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna do a little bit of extra sampling in here. You can see around the hands there, it really isn't working out so well. So let's zoom into 100% on that. Let's look at those hands on there. And it, is, it really is still working out quite well. I'm gonna try sampling an additional color. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more in here. Clamp that down a little bit, looking pretty good. Let's see if that did it without cutting through my shirt. Yeah, that's just pretty good. Pretty good. See those other settings in here, you can do um, little, uh, if there's holes that are being, that are, they're getting that you need to fill in, but there aren't, this is actually working out quite well in there. Um, if you have some issues with edges, you can work on that with the edge tool on here. So let's zoom in to 100% again. Kind of hard to do this on this tiny little broadcast screen here. Much easier on a bigger screen. So like these edges here are a little bit rough. Let's go back to the main view on here. And what I might want to do is grab the edge tool and drag across and start to play with the feathering. Let's go to the map between, play with the feathering between these. So what this is effectively saying is this is what I want to keep. This is what I want to get rid of. And you can see now, as soon as I've done that, I've started to lose through the shirt there a little bit. So as I back that off a little bit, we can see if we can pull in a cleaner key around the edges in there, obviously while watching out for other data uh, as well. So, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there. But remember, we are not using this in the ideal position here. We're not right up against the background, so we are having some of the shadowing to contend with, but we have eliminated a good portion of that by, um, by backlighting a little bit there. So let me just shorten this clip so it doesn't take so long to render. I'm also gonna add a little bit of color correction on this because the colors matching, this is a big part of making this stuff actually look good, is the color matching of the recorded video of me doesn't match the look and feel of the shot in the background. That was, it's a much warmer look on there. So I'm gonna very quickly, just gonna go in here and add a little color correction. Let's go up to the color tool on here. And uh, let's see, let's just let's do in the master and just add a little bit of warmth into the master on there. Just, just a little bit, just a little bit in there. I could go into white balance and play with that as well, but let's do it the easy way, there we go. Maybe a little bit more in the highlights. No, I get too much in the shadows. That's looking all right. That's better. So I'm going to do the same thing on this shot here. Let's go to this shot here. Add a little bit of warmth into that one. Just so it doesn't look quite so pale. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to take that and hit render on there. And that will take a moment to render because this is my older laptop. I'm going to let that chunk away, and, uh, and just recap what we've seen here. So again, if you missed the, the main first video, you do want to see that. We talk about how the whole Reflect Media Tech works, these LED lights shining on that gray, seemingly simple gray background, um, and how it reflects the light back into the lens. 
It's incredible. Uh, the fact that you you only see this when you're looking through the lens, and that was actually something I forgot to do in the first demo. I was going to show a different camera angle off axis with the light on. You don't see it, and that's part of what's so crazy cool. I mean, look at the background, or you can see the background there, right? There's the background. The light is on. The green light is on right now. It's pointing at it, but you can't see it from here. As soon as I switch to the view through the GH5, there you see that. There it is, but from this view, you can't. The light is on right now. It's just not showing up unless you're right on axis. And you can even stand next to it and you don't really see it. You don't really see it until you're looking through the lens, right through that ring. It's, a, it's pretty remarkable. Okay, um, let's just play what we've got on here. So we're not waiting all day. Let's just see what we've got. So I'm gonna hit play on this. And even with the hair on there, that is not too shabby at all. Now this is using Final Cut Pro 10. There are Definitely better keyers out there, dedicated keyers. I've been told that After Effects seems to be very, very good, and I know the DV store is in the chat room, and they said earlier, uh, they recommended something. They said, to get an instant key on location in the studio, we use and recommend Photo Key 8 from FX Home. So Photo Key 8 from FX Home. I haven't ever looked at that before, but that's something that you might want to look at as well if you're looking for a really good key. So that, my friends, is everything I wanted to show you today. We are going to break out one more time for the fourth and final part of this, uh, this segment, which is going to be the Q&A. So anybody who's watching live, you got any questions? I know there's already a few of them in here. We're going to address those. If you think of anything else, now is the time to ask. And we'll see you back here in just a moment. If you're watching this not live, just click on the thing that's popping up here and that'll take you to the Q&A. See you in a minute.